Why do we care? Why do we care about climate change? And there's tons and tons of reasons, and I'll just give you three here today. The first and foremost is the changes in the opening of the Arctic. You can think of the Arctic as the fifth ocean. What I'm pictured here is the Bering Strait. I am someday, so help me God, I'm going to go down to 20th and K Street here in Washington, D.C. and I'm going to take a map of the world. And I'm going to ask the first 100 people that pass by if they can find the Bering Strait. What do you think the odds are? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, that's it. It's 60 nautical miles. It's between us and Russia. And it is the only entrance and exit to the Arctic Ocean on this side, on basically on the Pacific side there. So everything has to go through here. Uh, how much is going through right now? Not much. Why? Because there's ice. Hey, guess what? I think the ice is going to be, we'll probably start seeing ice-free conditions by about the mid-2030s. And by the middle of the century, we'll probably start seeing 8 to 12 weeks or 2 to 3 months of ice-free conditions. Once you get that amount of ice-free time, the big shippers of the world are going to start really paying attention to this because what they do is they're looking for guaranteed, no kidding delivery dates. They do not tell their masters when they leave Yokohama, hey, when you get to the date line, look left, and if it looks clear, go. Otherwise, keep on going through the Panama Canal. That is not their business model. Their business model is reliability guaranteed. So by the time you get to two to three months, they're going to be doing that. And they're probably not even going to go through the northern sea route or the northwest passage. They're just going to go straight over the top. And I can tell you here today that people in Iceland are thinking right now as to how do they become the Singapore of the 21st century. Because when you think about it, that's going to be the terminus. So why do we care? Well, that's a strait that could have the importance of the Strait of Malacca and the Strait of Hormuz, because if you have fossil fuels coming out, and we and Russia together control that strait, that's a big change. What's this a picture of? This is a picture of a glacier and, uh, and some scientists that are studying it. Why do we care about that? Because what's going to happen to the sea level rise? In the 20th century, the sea rose about 8 inches, if you do the arithmetic. It's about two millimeters a year. Is that a huge change? No. Can we deal with it? Yes. Did we? Yes. Was it a big deal? No. OK. That's cool. But what's going to happen in the future? Well, what's going to happen in the future, we're already up to three, three and a half millimeters. That doesn't sound like that much. But you know, again, do the arithmetic. That's a 50% increase in what the rate of rise was we saw in the 20th century. Why is that? Well. As the water warms and 85 to 90 percent of all the heat, the excess heat, has gone into the ocean, it goes to warm the water. What do warm things do compared to cold things? They expand. They get bigger. The ocean's getting bigger. So that's part of the sea level rise. The glaciers are melting, like around in the mountains and stuff like that. Yes, they are melting in the Himalayas. Yes, they are melting in Glacier National Park. Both of those are melting. But then, but where's the... Uh, you know, where's the, uh, the real water? You know, with apologies to Billy Sutton or Willie Sutton, you know, why do you rob banks? It's where the money is. Why do we study these glaciers in Greenland? It's where the ice is. It's where the water is. Uh, and these glaciers are starting to fall apart much faster than anybody, even two years ago, thought they were going to do there. So this is going to be a huge issue. And potentially, we can see the seas coming up somewhere between three and six feet in the 21st century. Eight inches in the 20th century, three to six feet in the 21st century. Is that in the IPCC? No. Why? Because if you read the report, they said, we just don't understand the ice sheet dynamics. So all we're going to do is like just kind of uh, figure out what the expansion of the ocean is and melt a little bit off the top. Uh, it's being shown in a variety of ways there that that is a gross, gross underestimate. So I've told my boss, Admiral Ruffed, sir, Look at three to six feet. Now, I have, no kidding, this is a true story, I have really had a really senior person come up to me and say, hey, Titley, why does the Navy care about sea level rise? It's like, well, we're the Navy. We tend to build our bases at sea level. I mean, it's just kind of a fact of that's where you put ships. <laughs> but it's more than that. It's the US infrastructure. Look at where our oil refineries are. 
Look at where those are. Look at, they're all around Houston, right? New Orleans, they're in the back bay out by Oakland. It's all at sea level. There's tremendous infrastructure that this will have an issue for. So we've got to think about that. Okay, with apologies to, uh, to this guy on the right here, you remember him, Tip O'Neill? Okay, just like politics, all sea level rise is actually local. Sea level rise is local, and what that uh, will cause us is you've got to pay attention to what's the land doing as well as, what the, uh, as well as what the ocean is doing there. The ecosystems, ocean acidification. Why do we care? It's not a huge change, but it's about a 30% change, but it's more change in 200 years than in 200,000 years. And if you're a critter or an ecosystem, you've got to adapt, and you've got to do that now. And if we can't figure that out, you've got to start then asking yourself, where do the one billion people get their food from? Okay, so we got a couple choices. We can either keep our gas on the gas pedal, you know, and kind of do the Thelma and Louise thing and run this really, really big uncontrolled experiment and kind of have plan B is hope. Or what I would submit is once again, this man says that uh, he has great confidence in the United States because we tend to do the right thing after exhausting all other possibilities. <laughs> so I kind of like to think about the model of Apollo 13. It was a crisis. We rose to that challenge. We have ways to do this. And I would suggest the Navy is working this. We have our task force climate change. We have our energy initiatives. We are cutting back on our greenhouse gases. I would ask you, go to the National Academy's website. Take a look at America's climate choices. Read the summaries. Get involved. Tell your leaders what you think about this. And together, this is a huge challenge. It's the future. It's unknown. It's hard but we can and we will figure this out. Thank you very much.